Okay, it is Monday. We're going to do a Rashi from the second Aliyah. We have more Makos in this Aliyah, more of the plagues in Egypt. And of course, uh, in our Parsha, we move to the last three plagues. Um, and in the second Aliyah, we have Makas Choshech, uh, the plague of darkness, which is a fascinating plague. Wanted to look at a couple of Rashis over here. So as the plague comes into uh, to being, uh, Hashem says to Moshe, Nete yadcha la shamayim choshech al eretz mitraim vayamesh choshech. Pastuk is a little bit confusing. He says, put your hand up to the sky and there's going to be darkness on eretz mitraim. Vayamesh Choshech. Now, Vayamesh is a hard word to translate, but somehow the darkness is mentioned twice. Its arrival is mentioned twice in the Paso. So Rashi has to explain a little bit about why it's mentioned twice. So uh, right here in the beginning of this Rashi, Vayamesh Choshech, Vayachshich Aleham Choshech, Yeser Mechashicho Shalayla, Choshech Shalayla Yamesh Vayachshich Od. So the first explanation Rashi says is that there's two levels of darkness being described here, as it seems to be in the shot of the Pasuk. Somehow he's going to put his hand up to the sky, and there's going to be darkness on, on Mitzrayim. And that, then, then more darkness is going to come. And he explains why uh, there's a few explanations of why uh, uh, means another darkness is going to come. And neither one, not, none of them is perfectly satisfactory, to be honest with you. It's just a hard word to translate. But in some fashion, no matter why this word Vayamesh means that, somehow it means that more darkness is going to come. There's going to be two stages of darkness. Darkness is going to come, and then more darkness is going to come after that. Um, Rashi adds one little bit here, not based on the Pshad of the Pasuk, but by, based on the Medrash, that Vayamesh, one of the explanations is like Mamashus, like there's a, a tangible nature to the darkness. So there's going to be the second wave of darkness, Shayakaful Umuchupal Ad Bo Mamish. It's going to be so dark that it's actually going to be a tangible darkness. Like, you know, when you go through a, a fog that is so, so thick that you can almost feel the fog. Not only does it obscure your vision, but you can actually feel it. There's a mamashus, there's an actual tangibility to it. That's perhaps what the word vayamesh means over here. But these two stages of darkness, um, whatever the word vayamesh means, there are two stages. It actually filters into the reading of the next psukim as well. Vayet Moshe et yadol So now after the command is given, Moshe actually goes and executes this. So he puts his hand up to the sky. Then there was a darkness of night on all of Eretz Mitzrayim for three days. Okay, that seems like a simple explanation of what actually transpired when Moshe put this into action. But now there's another puzzle. It was so dark that no one could see each other. And no one got up from where they were for three days. And now we have another little tidbit of information. So we're just trying to parse these psukim now. So the last piece is the easiest, which is that the plague of darkness only affected the Egyptians. It didn't affect the Jewish people. The Jewish people had, had light everywhere in their dwelling places. Like most of the other plagues, they were not affected by the plague of darkness. Only the Egyptians were. But in these two psukim, right, we parse the first pasuk, two stages of darkness, and whatever vayamesh means, perhaps there was a tangibility to the second level of darkness. But now we have to parse these two psukim. First, we hear about the darkness coming on Egypt for three days. Now we have seemingly a description of what happened during the three days. Lo ra'u isha sachiv, people couldn't see each other. Lo kamu ish mitachtav, no one could get up. But then it says again, shloshes yamim, another three days? or the same three days? If it's the same three days, then why is it being repeated again? If it's another three days, then what distinguished these three days from the first three days? Hope you see the question here, just in terms of parsing the words of the Paso. So this is how Rashi puts it all together, reading these two psukim together. He says, So the first stage of the Pasuk is the first Pasuk. The first stage of the plague is the first Pasuk. Moshe puts his hands up to the sky, and there's a choshech afela, a dark, dark darkness, a darkness of night that comes upon all of Eretz Yitzrayim for three days. 
And what happened during those first three days? That's where the second Pasuk picks up. Lo ra'u ish esachiv osan shaloshes yamin. For three days, people didn't see each other during that first stage of darkness. Now there should be almost like a comma here or like a period here, a break in the Pasuk. So the first half, of the second pasuk actually goes along with the first pasuk. It's a description of what happened during the first three days described in pasuk Chafbez. Then after that brief pause, now we have stage two. Now Rashi says, After the first three days where there was a simple level of darkness, where people just couldn't see each other. The second three days, there was a further stage of darkness that was so difficult, so overbearing that no one could move. They were stuck in place. They were frozen in time. If they were standing, they couldn't sit. If they were sitting, they couldn't stand. And that's what the second half of this passage describes. Lo kamu ish mitachtav shaloshes yamin. In the second three days of the plague, it was so bad that not only could they not see each other, but they also couldn't move. This explanation of these two psukim and the two stages of darkness fits very well with Rasi's explanation of the first pasuk, if you remember. Vayhi choshech and vayamesh choshech, telling us that there are two stages of darkness and that in the second stage of darkness, it was so thick it was almost tangible, right? So the two stages described in Chaf Aleph are now borne out in Chaf Bez and Chaf Gimel, although the conjugation and the split of the psukim are a little bit confusing, but the two rashes together uh, very, go very, very nicely and explain that in the totality of things, the first three days, there was darkness, it was pretty bad, it was pretty thick, no one could see each other. In the second stage of the plague, in the second three days, it was so dark, uh, like a darkness never known to the world before, where people actually couldn't even move because of the thickness of the darkness that was almost tangible. As Chazal say, it was ovi dinar, it was like a few millimeters thick that they couldn't really see, as if there was like a, a lens over your eye that was a few millimeters thick, thick that wouldn't allow you to even see out, you know, like right in front of you. Now, final piece of the Rashi, which I want to point to before we end, which is, of course, why was the plague of darkness so important and why was it so dark? right? Because darkness could cause suffering, just plain darkness, being at night all the time, right? With no daylight can cause people to suffer in and of itself. Why was it extra thick darkness? And why did the Jewish people have light? Rashi explains, so there were people who didn't want to leave. There were Jews who didn't want to leave Egypt. And Hashem wanted them to die before the Jewish people left successfully. But they didn't want the Egyptians to see that they were dying because the Egyptians would ridicule them and say, oh, the plagues are affecting us. The plagues are affecting them. We're all the same. No, Hashem wanted the Egyptians to realize the plagues were only directed at them. And therefore, he puts a plague of darkness so the people could die under the shadow of darkness and the Egyptians wouldn't see it. Second reason, because the Jewish people had light and the Egyptians didn't, it allowed the Jews to see what the Egyptians had during that time. When they would leave Egypt one day, they would ask for their vessels, for their money, for their silver, for their gold, as was promised already to Avram Avinu. And the Egyptians would reply and say, oh, we have nothing. Merlo, the Jews would be able to say back to them, Ani plonihu. They would be able to say, no, 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 you can't pull the wool over my eyes, right? The wool was over your eyes in the darkness. I could see what you have in your house. Actually, I know you have that silver, silver candelabra. It's right there on the third shelf of your living room. And so they were able to be very specific in their requests, um, really, uh, when they were leaving Egypt. That was the purpose of the darkness. Much to think about here in terms of the plague of darkness. Um, certainly in terms of its importance um, for these two goals that uh, Rashi explained. Have a great day, everyone.